Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, or good day, wherever you are in the world. And welcome to the next episode of No Dice, No Glory. Sponsored by our jobs that actually pay us money, we're coming to you, not at all live, from an abandoned arms factory deep under a mountain in West Virginia. We are proud to proffer to you the finest in wargaming coverage. Without any further ado, let's get this show on the road. Well, thank you, Sean, for the amazing introduction. So let me tell you where we are today. We are here in Leesburg, Virginia, at Creative Pursuit Games, a brand new store, store and we're here with its proprietor, Dane. Welcome to the show, Dane. Hi, Mitch. How are you? Good. How you doing? So what are we doing here today, buddy? Uh, well, we're here doing the, um, the Flames of War Bloody Omaha Aces campaign. Really? Yep. It, it, it's uh, it's been a blast. It's been a blast so far. Um, uh, quite literally at times. Quite literally. Quite literally. I, at I'm times. telling you. I'm not going to tell you how I've been doing today because I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> so, um, so how many folks do we have here today for this event? Uh, looks like. Let me see. Did we have twelve? Looks like we had twelve. We filled. Uh, we filled all our permanent tables here. So you don't know this, but you know you have a lot of like uh, old heads here. That we love seeing. We got uh, Kurt Silver Jesus Reese. We got Pastor Pete Zerfi. That's right, amen. We got we got James Best Senior. We even saw an appearance of Brian Sullivan, a clean shaven Brian Sullivan. And and uh, some of these guys are locals. So tell us about the store that we're at today. You know anything about it? Uh, well, yes. Uh, I uh, it's it's my it's my store. Uh, it's been uh, it's been a dream for uh, for a while now, and um, about two months ago, we made it real. Um, we are uh, we are all about miniatures wargaming. Um, I love it. Um, I've been a Warhammer player since I was a teenager. We will not hold that against you. <laughs> well, we should, but no, we won't. Oh, but, and but then I got into historicals, and that is. Uh, but you're that, also not just a miniature store. I see cards over there. Oh yes, absolutely. We do a little of everything. And we we'll look uh, at the paintball. Oh yes, we are one of the only uh, paintball pro shops, independent of a field, this side of the Potomac. Because I remember when I first came here, and it was on Fourth of July. I just have a thing for dates. Plus, it was 4th of July. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, huh, paintball. And, mm -hmm. you know, we talked. And uh, so that was about two months ago. So how's it been going since? Are you getting regular crowds for some of the games? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We've got War Machine players meeting. We've got Flames of War players meeting. How we, big we is your Flames community? Because this is a, you know, you figure in two months, going from zero, how many guys do you have in here on a weekly basis playing? Oh my gosh! Uh, difficult to count, actually. That many? Um, uh, uh, it's 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 starting off small, but we're getting new players into the game. Um, oh, let me see. Uh, you don't have to give us an exact number. Just I'm happy to hear it's going well. It's S so you're getting new players. It's going well. We're getting new players. We're getting people who've never played before. How are you getting them in? How are you getting them into? Those boxes look cool to sitting down and trying out games? Um, well, a lot of people have seen it, have been aware of it before, and uh, it's just about providing a cool place to play, a good place to play, a good community, right. good terrain, the right environment. Um, they say, okay, you know what? I I'll, I'll pull the trigger on this one. We'll, we'll, we'll make it happen this time. And some people are seeing the new boxes. It also helps that I really like the new Battlefront plastics. And you I play and you play the game yourself. I do play the game myself. And I think that, you know, I cannot tell you how important that is because a lot of, um, you know, when Ed Sales and I were exchanging emails about, like, what list I was going to bring, and, you know, a lot of store owners are hands-off with mm -hmm. the game. It's It could be that Flames is not their thing, but since you play it, you're... When folks come in, you can get them more excited for it. You can tell them about the different armies. Yep, absolutely. Which not every store has, and I think that's a great thing. Um, looking here, how many of these guys are some of your regulars? Um, actually, our regulars are new enough. No one wanted to go up to the 125-point cap that we had today. You know, They're we had building. like guys like Pete Zerfi and I, and mm -hmm. I'm pointing at him, but you can't see that on radio, you know, have so many toys. We could have provided them extra toys. Oh. It's all right. I mean, th these guys are, are taking pride in their work. Mm -hmm. um, some of these guys I'm teaching to paint. 
Um, I, uh, I, I take pride in my work, and um, they're getting very into that. They're doing it themselves. Um, some of them have been doing this for years. You know, there are other players from other games who have just said, oh, I've always wanted to pick this up. Now's a good time to get into it with all the releases coming out oh, for Late War. Absolutely. And 4th for Edition is so, it's so wonderfully accessible. Um, it's uh, streamlined. I like that. Um, there, I remember playing in second edition. There were a lot of little fiddly rules. Are and you old enough to play in second edition? You don't. You, you know what were you? Fourteen? <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, uh, what was I? No, no. I, you I was, look like I was, a relatively young man. Not like you know. Pete and I are our next big life event's death. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong, sir? Am I wrong, Pete? No, I believe it's going to be uh, strain peace. Str be next. Strain peace. Yeah, I cannot wait. I can't wait. My next big like event. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. No, no. I, I was uh, I was playing in second edition. I was in my, uh, I guess I was in my early or mid twenties. You don't need. To, we don't. No, that's, I'm not going to age shame you, man. No, I'm no, not going to ask. All right. Oh, no, I'm too late. So, um, you know, I've seen a lot of stores come and go mm -hmm. here in the area. What are you doing that they? D the successful stores did to stay around, and what are you learning from the stores that have come and gone to make sure that, that this works? Because I, I understand how hard this is, and I think you and I came, when, when you, you and I talked about this when I came here on the 4th, mm -hmm. how hard this is. Yes. And when I left, and I'm just going to, you know, for honestly, I, I was like worried, like, you know, Flames, I'm having a, such a hard time getting folks in, back into the game. Mm-hmm. And just because I only have access to players that have played the game, mm -hmm. you seem to be very successful at getting new ones. So, and that's awesome. But how are you making sure that I, I could come here two years from now? Um, a couple things. One is we're trying to bring a very personal touch to the store. Mm -hmm. It's just two of us. Um, I'm running it, and my fiance Caitlin, is running it. It's just the two of us um, when we, you know, walk over to you and you say uh you are most welcome here we mean it you are you've asked me four times how everything's going and that's awesome uh, well, and when i came course. in it's like hey what's going on um and then he did yell at me he said uh you, sir you got to put your shirt and shoes on <laughs> so <laughs> so i mean it's it, and, I, and i complied <laughs> but you know personal service it, it, it's really important yes um without without a doubt well we're, we're here doing what we love. We really want to make this happen. Uh, making sales is how we will keep the lights on, but it's not the reason we're doing it. We're doing it because we love it. How many people said, this is crazy? Uh, several. Several. Let's, so what do we do? What do and I'm, I'm willing to help. How do we prove these people wrong? Um, well, you could come in and buy stuff. That does help. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, I'm going to have to ask for a raise at work. No, just kidding. <laughs> You know, and it's the thing is, I do have stuff to buy, but you know, I also look and I'm like, you know, mm. it, it's like bringing coals to Newcastle. Like I love Armada, mm -hmm. I have everything. Sure. I even have that big uh, Superstar Destroyer, and I played with it already. Okay. Yeah. So right. It's, it's another great game, and Flames. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I pulled. I actually pulled out like forces because I had to provide two forces here today. Sure. Like sure. I haven't seen the light of day. In, in eons, because sure. I haven't played Brits in a long time. What other mm -hmm. games are you are you pushing here? Uh, you mentioned Warhammer 40K. Well, we we have we have a great variety. And to answer your earlier question about how will we ensure we stay here, we are diversifying our holdings. Mm -hmm. um, while I am a miniatures war gamer and I am an historical war gamer, um, we carry a variety of miniatures war games, um, all the Fantasy Flight stuff, um, Armada. We have a uh, Star Wars Armada community starting up. Um, and I believe our very own Jason has been here. Yes, he has. He has been one of the driving forces behind it. Is, does uh, he show up on time? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, as the driving force, he can generally dictate what that is as long as we're open. So, you know, I, I had I had uh, Jason, who I love, and his beautiful mm -hmm. fiance Shannon to the house for dinner, mm -hmm. and he goes to introduce his fiance, and I knew her name, and he goes, "This is my fiance Sharon." So, Dane, you're gonna have to help me out. If he brings his fiance in, say hi, Sharon. Okay. And 
they'll give you a look. They're not violent people. <laughs> Oh, and then God. you can tell them that because, you know, we're going to ch- we're going to chess now if Jason listens to the non Star Wars podcasts, which are most of them. So 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 you've been playing this game for a while. What's your big what's your army? What's your favorite? Oh, I have a uh, have a panzer company. Really? Um, yeah, I, I, I like playing the Germans. The German engineering is uh, is, is a fossil fossil class. It's a lot of fun. What do you think of the new book? I like it. It's interesting. It's subtle. Subtle. The, 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 uh, the advantages that you get over Fortress Europe. I was expecting to crack into it and go, Yax Panthers! Uh, well, no, they're not there. But the improvements are small. They're subtle. They're incremental. But they make it that 10% better, that 15% better. And I don't know if you've been seeing all, the, all of the coverage we gave to it on No Dice, No Glory. And I did the Anchor article, and I said, you know... The Americans wowed me when they came out mm-hmm. because there was a lot there. The cards oh, were yeah. amazing. Absolutely. But I'm not an American player. So mm-hmm. I'm always looking like grass is always greener on the other side. Mm-hmm. But when the, the Germans came out, I was less overwhelmed mm-hmm. because I was a hardcore Panzer Lair player. And I love some of the things Panzer Lair had. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it's great to have Panzer Lair back in the game. And for a guy that owns 28... 250 half tracks. This was this was <laughs> this was kind of awesome. No, absolutely. Yeah, like I'm getting a look here from past Pete. Um, you know, but folks should remember that this is only one half of the Germans. The other half comes out uh, in March with mm-hmm. the S, the Waffen SS book. Mm-hmm. And looking at you know what you're going to be able to play there, Hitler Jugen, um, Second SS Das Reich. It, 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 German players are going to get a lot of love. Mm-hmm. Now the British only get the single book. Mm-hmm. We'll talk. We'll have to talk about that some other time. But um, yeah, I, I kind of like the book. Mm-hmm. Um, have you picked up any new stuff to build a different force in the book, or you're staying with your your uh, Panzers? Oh, me! I'm working on terrain mostly. <laughs> yeah, the, but the tables look beautiful. I know nobody can see that out there. Yeah. But. Well, we'll we'll, yeah. uh, we'll we'll toss them up on Facebook. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, and we'll I, I've posted a few from Facebook here too. Okay. So uh, you know, which is which is kind of awesome. So the tournament today is a is an escalation tournament. Yes, yes, uh, we're um, we're playing through the days and I believe weeks following the Normandy invasion. And how'd uh, that turn out in real life? Well, we're not speaking German, or at least not very much. That's right. So uh, reasonably well. Uh, well, you know. We always put spoilers, and, you know, usually we, when we talk to industry, mm-hmm. we always ask for spoilers, but if right. anybody's listening, the Germans lost World War II. Yeah. There may be some people out there that don't know that. Um, I think there may be a few of the Japanese who are not yet aware on, you know, a few islands, but I imagine... How old would those dudes have? They would have to be almost 100 years old. I, yeah. There yeah. are probably fewer of them every year, but uh, you never know. Exercise, eat right. Yeah. That's right. You know, live the Bushido life. <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's all good stuff. So um, one of the other things too that's interesting about this place. Mm-hmm. Tell me about what's on that back table over there. That ah, that is the beginnings of our maker space. Uh, we are not just a game shop. We are not just a paintball pro shop. We are also building out a maker space. Um, this was actually my fiance's idea at first because Caitlin is uh, an expert cosplayer. She's brilliant at it. She's been doing it for years. She helps put on some of the conventions in the area. And she wanted a place to teach people about costuming. She wanted to have tools present. And I said, well, that's a fantastic idea because many of these can be multi-purpose. You can use them for building out your armies. You can use them teaching people to paint. You can use them for custom work, terrain work. We can use them working on our paintball stuff. Yeah. I am a, uh, I am a paintball tech. Uh, I've been doing that for years. You're so. a man who has a lot of hats. Um, yes. Yes. There's nothing wrong with that. No, I, 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 I like it. Oh, we're saying goodbye to Brian oh. Sullivan. Brian, thank you for coming. Brian, clean shave. We're going to call him clean shave and Sullivan. Hey, Brian, always a pleasure, Brian. Say hi, please. Hola. <laughs> uh, and, and you know, Brian's been on. Brian's been on a couple times. That is the shortest we've ever gotten him off. Uh, well, he he he's got to run. <laughs> Sorry about the pun, Brian. <laughs> Have a good one. Travel safe. So yeah, Brian, it's it's good to see him too. So so, what's your and 
serious straight question you don't have to answer let's say i came in and i said you know i want to i want to make some t34s mm -hmm. in the, in your printers here okay. but you sell t34s are you yes. cool with that or um i don't think as uh a, 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 as a man who occasionally brands himself as an engineer, I don't think that is the proper engineering solution. I don't think we can make better T-34s than Battlefront sells. And if I build you for the time on the printer to really make good ones, if you could figure out how to do it, you'd be paying less for the Battlefront stuff. The 3D printer, when it comes, is going to be for making little custom additions, things that it's not worth it for a game maker to make. You make those little accessories that make it that 5% better. That's what that's for. Um, that, the Battlefront stuff, you're not going to make better than that. And on, on, folks on out there should printer. know that. And you know but something? I didn't seed you with that answer. Got folks that are out there that, you know, fear printing. Well, yeah, you know, your companies will not make money on stuff people print. But it shows on the table. Uh, I've not mm -hmm. seen stuff mm -hmm. as good looking as what I can buy for Battlefront, especially the new plastics. Right. They are so good. Right. Oh, no, they're brilliant. They're yeah. excellent. They really are. I, I, and that's coming from a guy who's been doing plastic models for most of his life. These are really good models. Yeah, I, I, they really are. I I, I'm, I'm not saying that just to plug them, just because I'm the guy selling the models. I'm happy to. I'll tell you about horrible models I've had over the years. And, and there are some out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. But, yeah, you can't really complain. Like, the Battlefront, the new plastics, I, I dig. I noticed no Team Yankees. Is that something we're going to see here? or So what we've done is uh, we have stuck to core essentials from the start. Okay. Flames of War, World War II, this was the core offering from Battlefront. This okay. is what they do. I think when, uh, when Team Yankee gets re-released as World War III, um, there's been enough chatter. There's been enough interest. I think we may hop on board with that. I know I would like to. Pete Simovich, are you listening? Because I know you, you guys do in New Zealand sometimes listen. But, yes, this place will be selling Team Yankee. And a lot of it is just building that community. I think people go on the website and they're like, what's this NOM stuff? What's this fate of a nation? And mm. it's kind of a, you know, we always have drug references in our podcast <laughs> because there is an addictive quality to these games. I started off with one Canadian army. Matter of fact, I pulled out some of them today because, you know, I'm providing armies here today. And I'm like, man, you know, I'm just going to do the one army and, well... Oh, it, you know, it, I got it a lot more now. It never goes that way. They're, they're, like, they're like Pringles. You never do just one. Yeah. And then uh, just don't reach your hand into a Pringles can to get that last chip. <laughs> just invert, invert, invert it, invert it. Um, what do you play besides Flames of War? Because you know where I'm going with these questions already. Oh, okay. Uh, you're, you're talking about how I dabble in games development, too. I dabble. I, I, I dabble. For uh, four or five years, I've been working with a small group of friends on a, um, on a World War II naval combat game. And as most of our audience knows, I am just not a fan of naval gaming. It, it, it's <laughs> tricky. They tend to be either... It's a big joke, by the way. I'm Coco for Cuckoo Puffs. Th with th that, that's right, Heart of Leviathan. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm running on no sleep today. No, I, I know how you feel. <laughs> I know how you feel. Um, no, so, so uh, I, I've always been a fan of naval history. Um, I love everything Dreadnought era, World War One, World War Two, and I, I. Talking about Flames of War, I've been very much inspired by how they've made as an accessible, engaging historical game and addictive. Oh, and addictive. It's not so up close and personal and into the nitty gritty that it takes days to play neither is it so abstract that you don't feel like you're part of the battlefield mm -hmm. you are on the battlefield you are in command the battle is happening you see individual shots flying but it's playable right and it's fun and um i just haven't felt like there's been a naval combat game that reaches out and grabs me like flames of war has for land combat so we said you know what a lot of people say that I, it, I, I, it's, it seems so it seems to be the impetus behind a lot of games and you know i wrote uh and i'll send you a link to it i wrote an article about how 
there's kind of a, been a renaissance, a reemergence of naval gaming. And mm. naval gaming, there's a few things that, you know, my opinion go against it. One is the tables tend not to look pretty. I have mm. a beautiful um, FLG mat. Oh, yes. No, the FLG one is wonderful. But I've had a few, and the FLG is my favorite. But look at some of these terrain pieces here. We can make such elaborate, interesting terrain um, for, uh, for 15 to 30 mil. But not um, for naval games. Well, you can... But you have to you, you have to make the effort. You have to make the atolls. You have to. Uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's fog is usually pillow stuffer. <laughs> and just, yeah, and the other thing too about naval gaming, I think we alluded to this before, and I've mentioned this, and I know the guys on the naval war gaming uh, Facebook site are going to kill me, but I, I like Mal Wright, great guy. But naval war gaming had an old guard with it, mm -hmm. and. The, you're going to play these rules. These are, these are the best rules ever. People have developed a ton of rule sets that just mm -hmm. have not caught on. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then you go into World War II and you're adding air. Submarines play a bigger role. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the other part, too, about the Dreadnought period is we don't have too many battleship on battleship engagements. You have enough. Enough to study. Enough to right? study. But, you know... My thing is that is what's always held naval war gaming back, mm -hmm. and as somebody who loves naval war gaming, that you know, and I think I told you how many twenty four hundred ships I have and one six thousand scale and heart of Leviathan. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a junkie for it. Sure, I have my favorite rule sets, but I you know I go to events and I go to tournaments and local gaming stores like you know uh, the Novak guys. Mm. Maybe if there was a fifth Friday in a month, maybe they would allow. <laughs> A naval war game, and it's it's kind of tough. But on the other side, I've never shown people a naval war game and have them walk away hating it because well, they're always a lot of fun. You've got a home for it here. Well, yeah, you've got a home for well, it. Well, I wasn't here. worried about that. <laughs> I, you know, you and I speak the same language with that. So, no, that's awesome that you're working on rules because uh, you know we need that one rule set that is just going to get people excited and play. The other problem, I think, with naval war gaming is it's either two in the weeds details. Because have you ever played Sea Creek? Uh, no, I have not. I believe that's one that we uh, perused when trying to find one we liked. Right. We, look, we looked at a lot of them. And like I say, they were either two in the weeds or Wait, they were no too abstract. Right. And, you know, th there, there's, no, there's no flames of war of naval combat games out there. Yeah. Not that we found, not that we really like. Well, so. I'm a, I'll plug Heart of Leviathan one more time, which, oh. you know, is doing great war. And, uh, you know, when when that comes out, I'll definitely bring it here and leave a copy with you. Oh, yeah. It Pete, did you get a copy of it? No. No. You see, Pete? Pete disappeared. Like, he, <laughs> he went off the grid for a little while, and now he's back. And I, I, I'll tell you, there's two guys that I'm always happy to see, because I don't see him very often, is... It's Pastor Pete's and Silver Jesus. Let's walk it in right now. Yeah. So uh, there he is, the man, the myth. Well, I, I, got, I got to play again after months. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, you've had other things to think about over the last few months, you know, and I, I've been practicing. So, um, but, you know, that's, that's kind of great. How can I find this place if I am uh, in the area? Uh, if you look up uh, Game Store, Leesburg, Virginia, uh, you will find us on Google. And uh, let's look at it's Creative Pursuit Games, one word, dot com. And yep. we are located here at 29 Cat Catakin? 29 Catoctin Circle, Catoctin. Northeast. That's really, you know, English major here. Um, Leesburg, Virginia. And definitely come by. Say hi to Dane because very friendly guys. And, and uh, there's your... Fiance painting. Yep, yep. Caitlin has uh, has taken up painting big time since we. Uh, uh oh, since she's we coming over here because she heard her oh. name. Oh. You know, so I'll tell you what, we, we can ask her a few questions too, just okay. so people think that there's no women that game. Uh well, uh, th those and people that's a are lie. mistaken. We that's ha a lie. We have, yeah, a lot of women get driven out of gaming by the antics of some male gamers. And, yes. Uh, well, since we uh, since we have a woman on management that doesn't happen here we have lots of female gamers and you know no dice no glory has two female uh, members of the staff one is the lady in the dress so caitlin say hi hello 
So, so you are you're part of the duo here working in the store, and you're a I heard an a expert cosplayer. I don't. You flatter me, or at least he flatters me constantly. How does one achieve being an expert cosplayer? I know more than anybody else in the room about a topic, which means that somebody else comes in and they know more. They're the expert. That is the actual definition of an expert: <laughs> being the smartest person in the room. You know, well, a lot of people topic. think they are, huh? On a specific topic. On a specific topic. Well, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, most of us tend to only talk about topics we know about. So, and, you know, I remember meeting you guys right after you opened. I think that was during your soft opening period. And you guys been having a good time since then? Oh, it's been a blast. It's been a blast, and we're about ready to fall over with exhaustion. But you guys look tired, so I'm going <laughs> to let you go. But <laughs> both you guys, first of all, thank you guys very much for hosting this today and running it. No problem. Of course, it's our pleasure. Thank you for opening a store in the Northern Virginia area because too many of them open and then close. And uh, I think people should come by and uh, speak to Dane and Caitlin here at Creative Pursuit Games in Leesburg, Virginia. And I'm going to let these guys take a nap and maybe we'll come... <laughs> Maybe we'll come back with some of these other uh, louts and ne'er-do-wells that are busy playing. Well, the playing tables are large enough that you probably could nap under them. They're, but not very comfortable. Not very comfortable, but actually I have napped under one of them. And, you know, if you get cigar box mats, you know, the, uh, they're fleece, mm -hmm. they do double as blankets. Ooh. Uh, that's excellent. They're work tables, game tables, and now bunk beds. Yeah. <laughs> so I can't wait for this, too. But, guys, thanks a lot. And, uh, hey, we're going to be here quite a bit, so uh, definitely look out. And um, I'm going to turn it back to the studio, and we'll be back in a little bit. Hey, and we're back. And we're still in Leesburg, Virginia, and I'm here with a very special guest. Special guest? Hey, this is Pastor Pete Zerfi, also known, a.k.a., as the Wargaming Chaplain. The Wargaming Chaplain. How are you feeling now, buddy? Man, I am beat. You look exhausted. I I, I am beat. You know, it's like I came here. I've got, um, I've got like wash up under my fingernails. I've got super glue on my on my on my fingernails. Um, I've got stain on the back of my hand because I was up till two thirty in the morning getting my new Germans ready for the D-Day launch. Who does that? Um, a, a, a person who is um, OCD. Well, it could be OCD or it just could be uh, obsessed with games and like it's like crack. You know what I mean? I can't get enough of it. And, and, and when I get a chance to really get a bunch in me, you know, that's what I do. So even my or the last podcast, actually it won't be, it would be podcast 45 where I sat down with a guy that wrote a book on war gaming, my friend Matt Caffrey. Okay. And even with him, a man who's probably in the 70s, started war gaming in the 60s. I use drug references, hard drug references, because there is an addictive thing about this game. So we played four games. It, it came down to 125-point annihilation. Whew. Pete and I played, and I tried getting Pete off his game. <laughs> I really tried getting him off his game. And it's a trick I learned from Bob Everson. Right, right. And no, you, you, didn't, you didn't bite, but it was still fun. But I'm uh, I'm beat, and I don't have half the drive you have. Right? Yeah, I got another two and a half hours out of here. But that's part of my commitment to the game too, and the, and the new store. I wanted to be here. Yeah, and it, it's great for the new store and this mm -hmm. and that. So, I remember your first tournaments. Oh wow! And it wasn't that long ago. It wasn't. It seems like a long time ago. Now. It really wasn't. Mm -hmm. And then you know you went on the Masters your first year. Right. You're doing pretty good this year, right? Not bad at all. I qualified for Masters again off of four tournaments. So I I'm congratulations. Doing okay. Thank you. It was kind of a fluke. So, uh, you know, and I wanted to talk maybe because of your background, mm -hmm. a little bit about more about where gaming falls in life with some of us. Right, right. I mean, for you, uh, you like the competition, mm -hmm. but yeah. is it relaxing? I tell you, the big thing for me, the thing I really love about the hobby is I could do it any time of the day or the night, some facet of our hobby. Right. I can study the history if I want to. I can read some books. I can watch a documentary. Uh, I can scroll online and purchase some uh, some miniatures if I want to. I can be up late at night painting, you know, getting that army just right and getting ready to roll. But what I really like is taking that out and then socializing with all the great guys in the community. Yeah, and that's, you know, and I've said this, and then if it's not true, please tell me. A war gamer, their passion is 24-7. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know, maybe this is a little bit too much, but sometimes as I'm falling asleep, I'm thinking about, what I need to paint next. I am thinking about, like, this is what's going through my head. And the reason is because I don't want to think about work. Mm -hmm. I don't want to think about 
what happened in the news that day. And to me, it, it's, I look at it as a, as a diversion. No question. It's a safe place for your mind to go. It is. You're not going to get all wrapped around the axle on, you know, something that's going on in your life that's, you know, twisting you up. It's, it's a break from all that. It is. And I think it, 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 you know, and from seeing you and seeing you play and getting to know you, I, I think it's almost kindred spirits here of what role this plays in our life. Because this is different than what you do nine to five. It, 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 it is different. But I'll tell you what, the other, you know, the things I do nine to five, you know, I'm a pastor and I'm also a therapist. So it's like um, I love people and I like being around people. And that's one of the things with the game that you have the opportunity to do. Right. And, you know, um, I'm kind of, you know, I call myself the wargaming chaplain. But you know, a lot of people do come to me and ask me about things or confide with me or have some questions, you know. And that's part of the camaraderie that happens you know, over over a four by six table with some dice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I've been seeing you now at these things for two years, mm-hmm. and you know, it, it was so good. That, you know, the, one of the reasons I don't want to put you on the spot here. <laughs> I decided to come is because you were coming, and I haven't I haven't seen you for a while. And like, what a treat of Kurt Reese coming. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my boy Jeff over here saw yeah, Flames brand, of War for the, the f- last week. The newbie. And I said, okay, so I'm definitely going now. I was just going to come by and say hi. Um, but, I, I mean, the social aspect of this hobby is, is incredible. And right. like you said, it, it's a 24-7 thing. Mm-hmm. And it's weird. And you almost look at things differently now. It's like, yeah. you know, I was in a pet store the other day, <laughs> and I saw all this stuff for fish tanks. Right, right. And I'm like, that can really help with my desert table and my Mesopotamia for blood and valor. You're a sick man, and I can relate. Yeah, I mean, but it's I mean, the same way with you. It's you know, time. I, well, I got to start going to a store. store. I can't go into a store without thinking about buying stuff for my hobby. You know what I mean? I'm in a fabric store with my wife, and I'm like, oh wow, that would make yeah. Great. You know, I could cut that up and use. It. I mean, it's just all the time. It is, and it's like a war gamer is a war, but you know, it's not universal, mm-hmm. because I could take you and me. Do you don't do board war games? Uh, not very often. I play Risk. I play um, Axis and Allies. A couple things like that. But it's not a big thing for me, no. Yeah, you're not an ASL player? No. Board war gamers don't have that. Right. They have the cardboard counters, and, uh, you know, they, they, don't, they don't have that. Uh, miniature gamers do, and it's kind of like a different passion. And I was just asked recently at Connections, well, aren't they the same people? And I'm like, no. I'm like a unicorn. I do both. Mm-hmm. I'm by right. gamel. Mm-hmm. You're by gamer. I'm mm-hmm. by gamer, I guess. Yeah, I thought so, you were a little um, uh, you're gamer fluid, uh, as we uh, like uh, to say. Yeah, I'm gamer fluid, and I, there's nothing wrong with that. And then you throw in PC games, mm-hmm. which I think appeal to both crowds. Right, but you know, right. I look at it as this is an all-encompassing thing in our lives. I'm, I'm a little concerned. Are you, are you moving towards cosplay? No. No. Okay. No. Right. And a lot of that isn't. You know, it's it, uh, until I lose some weight again. It's, gonna, it's difficult to get into a Barney costume. I would say, yeah. Well, and then, you know, we don't want to see you in tights either. I know? happen to have really nice legs. Uh, I like to think <laughs> I do. But, I mean, no, there's something uh, uh, about this hobby, like, as exhausted as it, it was today. And this is four games. Right. It is – it's almost 8.30. Wow. And we've been here since – I was here at 10. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. Yeah, you too. And, you know, it's – and you got a long ride home and – Please, I don't want this to be the Pete Zervi Memorial podcast. No, it won't be. I'll be careful. Um, I mean, come on. I got a Red Bull. I never do that stuff, but I'm like, I need a little bit of jolt for the ride home. You remember Jolt Cola? Big, big shout out for, for – yeah, I remember Jolt Cola. All the sugar and twice the caffeine? There you or go. No, it's it's all the caffeine – something like that. Yeah. What, what it means is, is there's something wrong with you if you have to have that much go fast in you. And you know what? As a therapist, I can talk to you about that. You can? You know, sure can. It's addiction. It so is. So do you ever think as you're studying, and this is another reason why I wanted to talk to you now. Right. Because you talk about obsessive compulsive, I'm sure, in, 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 in therapy. Sure do, yeah. Um, do you feel some people here may need? Well, <laughs> because I know there's some people here that need help, you know. Yeah. I mean, it would start right across the table for me. But, oh, I, uh, I definitely or, need help. Or around the room. But, you know, the nice thing about it is, is like we do recognize that we have this kind of obsessive thing about it. Yes. And sometimes we need to kind of reel it in and say, no, 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 no. You can't go buy that right now. You can't buy that right now. But we all have stuff we haven't painted. We all have stuff that we want to do. You know, I'm an ADD guy, so it's like, oh, I got to play this. And, you know, next thing I know, you know, five days later, it's something new. It's squirrel, baby. I'm in something else, you know. What, what is left on your painting queue? 
Oh gosh, you know I'm finishing up these krauts that I got. How about right those now. Japanese that you I, won? I, I still have them boxed up because we shifted into the whole V4 thing. Uh, they were dropping them off. They weren't going to continue to to roll them out for this iteration. So I'm waiting for them to come back in early war, and then that's what I'm going to do. I bought more stuff to fit into that, and I built it out, and I was spent all kinds of time building lists and things like that. And then like, oh, they're not supporting it right now. So yeah, I'm just going to wait. It's kind of too bad. Mm-hmm. Hey, so one of the other things that we were talking to with Dane, who's on the earlier part too, is. And I'm gonna. I feel kind of bad that the guys that have been playing in this store weren't here today. It was sad, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, it's not bad on Dane, but it's, you know, guys. First of all, you got to defend your store. Right, right, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, even coming and then taking loner armies out, because mm-hmm. once again with the OCD, everybody, Kurt Reese probably has enough armies to equip everybody here. Yeah. Um, that Russians and Germans, like you know. To come out, and hopefully Dane will get these guys to listen to the podcast. But hey, contact us and right. tell us because you know, you, you know, I'll tell you what we were mogged out on the tables. Right, I, it was only one table that that they put away. But even if you guys would have come and gotten a game or two in against some of these guys that really want to grow and teach the game, right, it's kind of worth it. So I'm going to call you guys out. I don't know any of your names. But I expect to see you the next time we're back here. Yeah, come on out and play, guys. You know what I mean? It's like, um, you know, I kind of see myself as an ambassador of the game, so to speak, anymore. You know what I mean? I'm not interested in, you know, curb stomping the new guy like, you know, you may run into. But And we've got some good master's level players here that are, you know, about growing the community and taking care of guys, you know, coming in and teaching them the game. And, you know, those guys just may not have been around it enough to know that, like, hey, you can still show up. Yeah, you know, we'll still put an army in your hand. Someone had an extra army here. I'm yeah. sure two or three. I know I did. I ran a Great War tournament. Yeah. And uh, I provided five armies. Oh, wow. Yeah. You play Great War. I sure do. I love it. Mm-hmm. What what force do you play in there? Well, I've got, uh, of course, you know, I have Germans. Yeah. Um, Which German I, list do you like? Uh, well, I mean, I like the Stoss, but I usually play the the uh, just like the regular regular German guys, and I throw a Stoss platoon in. Um, do you know what my go-to list there is? I know what. Well, you know, I'm kind of partial because I don't know if you know this. I made it because I liked it. Is the Siegfried still on list? Yeah, yeah. As your base company, you get those trenches, you get those gun pits, and you back them up with Stas. You know, I think I'm going to do that because I know that you you wrote that list. You turned it in, and uh, it was the it's the weirdest looking list that there is. You it look is. at that thing and you say, what is this? Cheap machine guns. Right. Cheap infantry guns. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's really, it's. It's but tough as nails when they're in those bunkers. Yeah, yeah, you, they they don't go anywhere. Right, they're rough. They're rough dudes, and you know it's you put the stoss in, mm-hmm. and you know all those guys start on the table. I mean, it's it's really it's. It I wish that that game would be a little bit more popular. I do too, and I think that maybe at some of the cons and stuff like that, we could shift away from some of the other things and try to put some demos together and. You know, because a lot of people just look at, oh, it's just an infantry slog. Well, it is, but it's different than... It's much different. You know, Glenn Goddard, he came, uh, I think, for a game, and, and he's like, okay, well, my mortar, I'm going to bombard. I go, no, it's direct fire. Well, how do you pin um, machine guns? Yeah. And guys are doing machine gun bombardments. But hey, we I, had three guys that don't play Flames of War there. Wow. Hey, I mean, machine gun is the king of the battlefield in... Uh, Great War. In Great War. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I'm also glad to see it coming back in Flames of War because the game is all about mobility anymore. So you're going to get infantry in the open. you got to make sure you have this stuff to pin. You have to assault to win. So you need that backup fire. So, you know, having all those, you know, rate of fire, you know, five, six, um, you know, uh, components are really, really handy to have. So let's talk about the list you ran at 125 points. <laughs> and uh, I said, oh, you're min-maxing. And you go, oh, is that what they call it? <laughs> And I don't know if you were you were BSing me or not, but it was. Let me explain the list from an outsider. Sure, please you can do tell it. me what I got wrong. Okay, it was a uh, crap ton of eighty eight in uh, bunkers. It was a beach defense company. Mm-hmm. It was a how many different formations? Three, I had three, three formations. Yeah, beach defense company. Yeah, Lair, Re- Panzer Grenadiers, yes. and Recky Panzer Grenadiers. No, it was Recky. It was the two fifties. The SD. Uh, yeah. Uh, 250s with the little two centimeter guns on them. How many platoons do you think you had? I have no idea. I can't I was count 14 that high or 16. this late at night. 
It was at least that many, but you have all the independent teams as well. I hated those things. Yeah, so you should have hated them, you know, because they tore you up. Yeah, those 88s were deadly. You had a total of eight. Yeah, spread out all over the table. Yeah. You had the and Tank Hunter 88s and the Flak 88s. And you can take a card out of the new deck that kind of dumbs them down a little bit and makes them each a point cheaper, which is almost enough to be able to afford the pack nests for each one. So you knock four points off for the guns, and then for six points you can add the pack front card to it. Mm -hmm. It makes it really freaking slick. I like the, the spear punk or whatever they call that thing. Yeah. Be able to sit up like, okay, i got some, some, some strong AT assets in here. I've got some HMGs. i got a little bit of infantry. Bang, you know, come on. Come get me, big boy. The uh, it reminds me of the, some of the old s s sever band lists, which are right, right. That is, we're never going to see those things again. It was a rough list, but you know, and like we were talking, you get a, a congested table, right? Then you're relying on those light assets, mm -hmm. and then it's up to your opponent to kill them fast enough, right? Right. And you know, so so many interesting things here. What was the one vehicle with all the German players we had here that we did not see? Uh, we didn't see Tiger tanks here. W no, there were. There were Tigers? Who had the Tigers? Uh, what's his name over there? We didn't see a single Panther. No, that's crazy, too. How do you not have Panthers? You, you wait. I just want to say this about the Panther. We all know it's the, the best tank in the game, right? We it all know is. that. And I'm not particularly a German player. You know, but we everybody's, you know, little complaints going on online. I'm talking, you know, how much better the Tiger is than the Panther right now. Same gun, different stats as far as remounts and yeah. crosses and all that kind of stuff. The advantage, you can take three, four, uh, 33 points in a list, which not a bad idea. Right. I think we're going to see something special for those coming out in the SS book. I think all the guys that have the Panthers, they need to hold on to them because I think they're going to become really playable. Well, I haven't seen them yet. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I, that I can't spoil, um, and I shouldn't. But it would be nice to see those things back because everybody hated those. Right, right. And then there was a list that was in vogue well before you started playing was the um, SS Viking list mm -hmm. with the uh, reluctant, with the fearless train Panthers, with the Panzer Kanon, wow. which you can actually do for Stugs. It was such a good list. Because you got a lot of stuff on the table. Mm -hmm. And then uh, with the artillery, if you took the, the Danish Vikings, they hit as veterans. Which, right. And, you know, that list we may never see again. Well, we didn't because it was a Kursk list, and it, we didn't see it. Yeah. But uh, I love that list. And, you know, the other one, too, about why I like the German D-Day book is it's Heavy Panzer Lair. And right. I love Panzer Lair. And Everybody I love Pan loves Panzer Lair. Well, I wish more people would have played it back in the day. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you, you can, they're going to come out with a, uh, a digital download, I heard, for 21st Panzer, mm -hmm. which if you wanted to get that, you couldn't. Right, right. Because they don't sell them anymore. No, and fortunately I have that, so I'm set to go when it comes out. So you have everything for the, you have yeah. all those funny little. Oh, yeah, yeah, all the Where'd weird stuff. Where'd you pick stuff? that up, though? I've had it for years, yeah. Really? I just picked it up one time. I wanted to run the 21st, you know. And uh, I picked it up like so many other people. It's, you know, it's one of those, you know, sort of cottage lists, you know, that people get boutique into. Boutique lists, as we like to say. Boutique lists. Boutique lists. It, yeah. sounds, it sounds better. It, it really does. And I like to run the 352nd. I don't think it's a boutique list, but I like the 352nd. I liked it back in the older books. That was a beach defense. It's the beach defense. Yeah, they're, they're, it's like tr just trained Germans. Right. So you get more stuff on the table. The 88s were, I think, reluctant trained back in the day. You know, if you if they got pinned, you were in big trouble. Uh, so the, the iteration that they've done in the D-Day book is just fantastic. Yeah. You have so many options, so many different ways to go with the list. I think the Falschermager books are tight. The Falschermager lists are tight. Yeah. Um, Kurt ran it, but the, the objective and his dice went against him. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it's – I like the book. I think the American book was really gangbusters. This right. is the second time in the podcast I'm saying that. And, you know, when I was looking at the German list, at first didn't wow me, but it's it's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and then you throw in the Waffen SS, which is going to appeal to those same type of players. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know. I mean, to me, having a separate Waffen SS book, it's knowing what units could be in there. Kind of curious to see how that's going to come out. Um, well, I think it was Pete did that podcast, um, and he said that they we're going to see a lot of trained Fearless trained. Is that when we interviewed SS. him? Yeah, I think it was yeah. when you interviewed him. Yeah, he, he said that, and I was like, oh, I love that. I love a fearless trained list. Yeah. 
You know, I like that ability for them to unpin. I like the ability for them to counter. But I guarantee they're going to be hit on three ups. Yeah, that's okay. Look, I played the Americans all through the desert, and that's what I took. That's what I rode to Masters last year. And everybody said, "Oh, you know, they hit. You know, they they assault with a five. They're hit on threes. You know, they um, they can't range in on any artillery. They're terrible, terrible, terrible. You know. But when you figure out how to play with those less than elite troops, you you kind of get to be a little bit better player. You know. Uh oh. The five-minute warning is here. Warning. So, um, yeah, I uh, it's going to be interesting to see what's going to be in there. I think they can have a couple of kind of weird special rules. Hopefully, they have some of those wacky units. I, I bet there'll be some of that. I really, I think, like we talked about the Panthers earlier. It's like you know, you had those lists before. Uh, where the SS had the cheaper Panthers, and I just, I, it's just a hunch, but I really think we're going to see cheaper Panthers <coughs> coming out in this next book to go along with the Fearless Train, and I hope they're not priced out of this world, but they may be about the same as the uh, Confident Vets, so we'll see. So, have you been adding to your Team Yankee collection? You know, I have, so... Um, Uh-oh. Yeah, um, I'm really... Since I got out, of, I haven't played much Team Yankee in the last year, because I've been so busy with uh, two jobs and another, you know, graduate degree, so... Um, I started buying models again, though. Oh, yeah. So when the new book comes out, I'm going to be ready to rock and roll in it. I still play my East Germans. I love them. I have an American force as well. Um, but that's – it's funny, you know. I only have two Team Yankee forces. Okay. Only two. And that just sounds wrong to me. So what but, do you think? Should I get Dutch or French? Well, here's the thing I think that's interesting about that is that a lot of lists look alike. Mm -hmm. And – all the Soviet Warsaw Pact lists really look alike. You just pick your poison. Right. It, some of them have maybe one or two different, like the Poles with the Diana, when the artillery rules go to version four. Oh, yeah. And they're going to be really nasty. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, so is American artillery. So should you do Dutch or French? I think the French are different. I think the French are really good. I think the French light infantry is tough. And then you run them with some really sound tanks, maybe Dutch tanks. Yeah, right. So do both. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, because check no, it out. no one's running these single-scope armies anymore. Right. Now, have you seen Oil Wars? I did. What mm -hmm. do you think of that book? Well, um, I haven't looked, looked at it close enough, but I really I like the look of the Iraqis in there. I'll tell you what, the Iraqis are tight. The Iranians are really good. Oh, yeah? Yeah, mm -hmm. because you can jam the table full of stuff. And they have from both sides, right? Yeah. So I the mean, Iraqis. Yeah, they got everything too. Yeah, and it's, um, you know, I, you know, what's weird because Battlefronts one company really puts out two games, and the attention that Oil War should have gotten as far as how change, how game changing it was, or how meta changing. Mm -hmm. I don't think. Oh, meta. Meta. <laughs> I don't think people. Yeah, meta. I don't think people realized how much of a change those lists were you know i'm excited to play them as soon as they, the, the new v4 comes out so or i get what is it 3.0 or whatever they're calling well, it. well whatever you know yeah, so uh, um you know uh, i'm looking forward to getting back into it because as i've you know looked at the blogs and looked at the books you know i'm excited to play it but i have not had the time ability you know the ability to put the time into it but i think the game has changed a lot let me make one point this new change into v4 is this uh the east germans are going to suck and I'm an East German player, and I've enjoyed winning with well, East Germans. What about the V4 do you think is going to make the Germans, East Germans suck? Because back in the day when you could, like, do this, you know, the uh, you do the, you know, the half on and half off, right? Yeah. Okay. You know, by unit. So because the East Germans had some really cheap units, you could front load them, and they needed to be front loaded to be able to, to get themselves into some good fighting positions to hit with some power right. initially. So now they're going to be 60-40. It's going to be the same as everybody else. I think it's going to be really difficult for the East Germans going forward. If With the T-55 list, yes. Yeah. I mm -hmm. think that people— Poor infantry. I think people ignore the T-72M list. Oh, yeah. You never see them, right? And because it's a— Okay, it doesn't have the great armor, and but the thing is, the points you're playing for that T-72M is good. What I'm hoping, too, is with the new books is that a East German list can take a platoon of something else instead of a whole formation. I think that hurts. If they do that, that's game changer there for East Germans. It they is. They need some of that stuff. Yeah, they totally do. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, I run East Germans too. Right. And like, I know you did the BMP spam. And you know, I don't know if you've listened to some of the podcasts we talked about it is it's like everybody saw you running that BMP spam mm-hmm. and everybody copied it. Right. But right. I said, yeah, it's one thing to hear that he runs that list. He wins with that list. Right. But you have to see how he plays that list mm-hmm. because if you don't play it like that, it's not an effective list. Right. So it's learning how to play that list. I, yeah, that, I, I worked that out pretty well. I played my American Rifles the same general way, the same kind of uh, tactical theory. Uh, for me, um, I just want to tell this, say this, I want to brag a minute. Like the highlight of my wargaming career yes. was at Cold Wars two years ago when um, I played uh, Triple G, Glenn Goddard, yeah. uh, beat him 6-1. Uh, I played uh, Austin Copti. Yeah, uh, the previous this, this year's Masters champion right. beat him six one, and then I played uh, the great Chris Jackson, uh, that same tournament and beat him six one. I rolled that I uh, ran the table on all three of those guys, and I haven't played since. And who ran that tournament? You know, I just would say that was no dice, no glory. Okay, I'm just bringing asking. it to us. No, I, I you know that was a you had three very tough opponents, mm-hmm. but they didn't have they had no answer for your list. No. And a lot of guys, because you haven't played since, a lot of guys have tried to emulate that, right, right. and they fail because you didn't stop. No. It is that easy, and other people. And I shouldn't say I haven't played, but you know what I mean? I sort of, that was about it. Well, we need to get you back it. into it, baby. I do. I do. I want to play. It's all fun. So, uh, last question. What do you bring into Masters? I'm going to run United States Armored Rifles. Yeah. That's my bread and butter. I know it the best. Um, I'm most comfortable with it. I know what they can do in, in uh, mid-war and, and late war. It's going to be a little bit different in late war because the bazooka at AT-10 is not going to be as effective as it has been for me uh, in mid-war. And I've played a lot, you know, there's been a lot of mid-war tournaments. So I'm pretty sure I'm sticking with the American uh, U.S. Armored Well, Rifles. we wish you luck. What did you uh, f- finish last year? Uh, I got fifth at, at uh, Masters last year. Yeah, so... First. First Masters, I was pretty pleased with that. You know, No Dice, No Glory does have Chris Jackson and uh, Austin going. Yeah, they're great so, guys. But I'm still I'm rooting for somebody from outside the family. Yeah. So I'm kind of hoping, you know, it's – I'm wishing you the best, my friend. Uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And I think that. you guys will – I think you guys have a good time. So I but bunked I, with Austin last year. He's got, uh, you know, he's he's been my road roommate he d- twice. He doesn't snore much and he snuggles good. Did he tell you like I end up keeping him to two o'clock in the morning? He does. He always finds something stupid to watch on TV. I didn't say that. He did. No. Yeah. Well, that's not what he said. He said we always have something to talk about. Yeah. Okay. Tom Mullane is like, you know, we get in one, you know, a couple of tournaments ago, and I'm like, hey, it's fast times at Ridgemont High. I've never <laughs> seen that. I, well, then you sit down and watch. So it should be good. And are we going to see you? We're probably not going to see you at um, at Fallen. Uh, I don't know, maybe. You know, probably, I, I'll tell you, the next thing I'm going to do is go to Barrage Con. Uh, the, yeah, talk. this is going to be out hopefully just before Barrage Con. Yeah. But, uh, you know, give a plug for Barrage Con real quick. Uh, I think it's the uh, Friday, September 27th, Saturday, September 28th. There's a mid war 109 and a late war 125 points. Yep. I think it's 109, yeah. Uh, Kurt Reese is running it. That is just a super, super little convention. We will put that. It is. It is. I went a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll put that up on the list. But, hey, Pastor Pete, man, it's awesome seeing you again. And uh, I'll see you soon, man. But uh, And if you guys, I, I've, I've, people do ask us very weird questions. Right. And people ask us what happened to you for, for the no last way. few months. Yeah. yeah, people have. I just got slowed down with, uh, with life a little bit. And they're like, why doesn't Pete have an article on No Dice, No Glory? And oh. I'm like. We've offered to him many times, but we also, we don't ask. Let me, as soon as I'm done with uh, this next um, graduate degree, uh, I'll, I'll start writing. I, I would like some pastoral slash uh, therapist writing. Hey, hey you, I, can, I can bring that to you. I can bring to you, um, I can bring to you like why prayer is essential to wargaming peace. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going mean, to ask you about that, but that I want to see. Yeah. All right. I can do it. All right. And we're going to turn it back to the studio and uh, we'll just go see who won this baby. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thanks so much for joining the show tonight. Remember to follow us on Twitter at No Dice, No Glory. And keep the conversation going on NoDiceNoGlory.com, now featuring our own message boards. Have a great night, everybody.